What's up guys, gonna do a quick video on uh, heat soak and the intake. There's a lot of discussion on forums and whatnot about whether or not it's a thing. I'm kind of skeptical. I think a open air element's gonna read the air temperature regardless of what the intake is at. So I'm gonna try to do a quick little video. I have this guy that I'm gonna shove down between the elbow and the intake and we're going to measure hopefully can measure near the same spot as the open element in the intake runner so we'll see what happens all right so show you guys quick placement on my motor here this is the uh, air intake temp sensor just the gm open element type it's in the last runner on the intake uh, if you can see that down in there Alright, so one thing I noticed real quick is like, how do I make sure the element doesn't touch the side of the wall of the intake? So, a couple zip ties should be able to make sure it's not rubbing anywhere and it's kind of in the center of the airstream. So, uh, hopefully this works. Alright, there you can see the zip ties have made the element pretty much centered. And hell, you can even see the open air. Uh, GM element. So yeah, I think we'll button this up and give us a try. I switched the input around a different temperature uh, input, but now they're correlating. So I might have to let it cold soak and do the beginning again. But I think the temperatures are low enough that we could just continue running for five more minutes and capture every minute and uh, see where we're at. So now they're matching. I'm seeing like 129, 129 there. 27 there. So shut the car off. Let's see what happens here. So we got 139. This has already climbed to 154, 55, 7. So off. I call that 158. 8. 145. Yeah, so we're, the thermal probe reacts a lot quicker than the uh, GM open air element does. And they're roughly in the same exact spot in the intake. So 164, write that down, 164. Temperature slowly rising, we'll call that 167. 157 there, so we got about a 10 degree spread. So you can see from when I restarted it here, so 129, 131, 30 seconds later it pulled 20 degrees out of the air 
about right cool down and then slowly kept creeping back up and they both match fairly well within five or so degrees even when we turn it off so back here is when the fan turned on this is where you start getting the increase because the fan blows pretty much right into the turbo inlet it's just a perk of this design here so let's see where we're at so 171 and intake manifold is showing 164. So you can solve how much energy has been put into an aluminum intake manifold. There's this number here, 0.897 joules per gram per degree for cast aluminum. So this intake manifold's roughly 20 pounds as most small block Ford, small block Chevy intakes go. So you can also Google and find out that it takes uh, 0.24 British thermal units to change one pound of air one degree Fahrenheit in an hour, right? And we, we also can Google and find out that there one joule equals this amount of BTU. So if you do one over that number, that's going to give you 1,055 joules to make one BTU or to converts to one BTU. Right, so we have over here, we know we have a 20 pound intake, which is roughly 9,000 grams, and we end up with a 60 degree Celsius change, right? So ambient air starts out at 60, F, which is 15 Celsius, and we increase up to 170 F, which is 76 Celsius, which is roughly 60 degrees. Make the math easy on me. So 60 times 9,000 is this. 540,000 right so that's joules divided by that has to equal that right so you scoot some numbers around and you end up with uh, 540,000 times almost 90 percent is going to give you this uh, 484,000 joules of energy to change 20 pounds of aluminum by 60 degrees Celsius so now we divide out the joules to BTUs, and that gives us 460 British thermal units, if you can do this in an hour. So we're just going to go with an hour of time, right? And the reason we're going to go with an hour of time is because we're going to need to divide out how much volume of air the motor consumes. So your typical small block Ford idling consumes about 8 grams per second, which if you times... 8 grams by 60 seconds, it gives you 480 grams per second, and there's 454 grams per pound, which gives you one pound per minute of air volume at idle, right? So that's important to know because we're going to divide out 460 BTUs by uh, a quarter BTU per pound per degree Fahrenheit for an hour, gives us that number. So this 1916 divided by 60 seconds per minute is going to give us 32 degrees. I think I'm doing this right. So you can expect two pounds of aluminum that is at 170 degrees with air starting at 60 degrees is going to add 32 degrees to that air in a minute. So the reason we want to stick with minutes is because we know the, mood, the motor will consume one pound air in one minute. So you can kind of expect that with that amount of energy in the aluminum intake, you're going to increase the air flowing through the intake by 32 degrees above the ambient air temperature at one pound of airflow per minute, right? So these are all swags that I threw together. The intake could weigh more, and the fact that the air intake temperature is reaching 170 tells you tells me that the actual temperature of the intake manifold itself is probably absorbing 200 degree air off of the head, or not air, but 200 degrees worth of energy out of the heads and being absorbed with oil splashing on the bottom and a bunch of other things going on, right? So this is just to wrap your brain around, is there really such thing as heat soak? Or is it we just don't have a medium air itself is just not um, dense enough to resist the change in temperature when you add energy to it. I think that's just a fact that people need to wrap their brains around. So uh, if anybody knows this math better than I do, then feel free to comment below. 
I'm open to redo my math, but my numbers seem to jive, unless I'm missing something here. So, uh, yeah, so let me know what you think. Um, I'm sure there'll be a great amount of conversation on this in the forums and whatnot, but see what you guys have to say.